Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be doing a try on Sephora haul. I've purchased a bunch of stuff that is new or new to me. I think I mentioned this on my Instagram stories that Givenchy came out with some new Prism Libre powders. Guerlain has come out with some new lipsticks and some new lipstick covers. Uh, so I had to pick up one of those. Uh, some Tower 28 stuff, which is a uh, new-ish, new to me, definitely. Um, an RMS concealer, which is new to me. Kevin Aquan uh, foundation. It's the skin tint. So I'm excited to try this. The idea of a skin tint is very appealing to me. And I've got a Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow quad here. And I'm really excited about this video because it is being sponsored by Sephora. You guys know how much I love Sephora. This is the first time we're partnering. So I'm just really, really excited. So a big thank you to Sephora for supporting my little channel here on YouTube. But let's go ahead and get started. I have all of my skincare down, so let's just jump right into the foundation. So this is new from Kevin Aquan. It's the Stripped Nude Skin Tint, and I decided to go for medium ST04. It's a little bit darker, I think, than I would normally get, but the pictures for the light colors seemed a little bit too light, and because I've been self-tanning, I thought, let me just try the deeper shade. I think... I think it'll work, we'll see. Uh, so here is the packaging. It is, is it a squeezy tube or a pump? Oh, it's a pump. So it's a tube, squeezy tube pump. <laughs> and it is made in France. There's a nine month uh, shelf life once it's been opened. And it's one fluid ounce. I'll have all the prices and the information down below in my description box, because I can never remember. But I'm gonna go ahead, well, I'm gonna shake it first, and then I'm gonna pump some out. And I'm just gonna hold this up so we can look at the consistency. Oh, so it's fairly light, a little bit lighter than I would say like a lotion. It's running down my hand. This shade has a little peachiness to it. Oh, there, I think you can see it there. A little peachiness to it, so I think that should be okay. I'll tap that on. And I'm gonna apply it to half of my face so we can take a look at the coverage, take a look at the color. We can compare it to the non-foundation side. And I actually have a Kevin Aquan foundation brush that I have not used in a long while, but I this is one of the brushes of his that I really, really enjoy. So it is like a dense round brush and it's it's a really unique shape because it's, you know, it's domed, but it's a really long kind of dome. It's not just domed at the top. So anyway, it works great when you just kind of like angle it down like this and it just spreads foundation so nicely. It's really soft on the skin. Very, very light coverage, which you guys know I really like. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more on everywhere. It feels really nice too, it feels light. And I think because of this light coverage, there's probably quite a bit of forgiveness in terms of which shade you end up picking. So this medium looks fine, I think, on my skin tone, but I think it's because a lot of my natural skin is kind of peeking through. I'm just gonna go in and pick some up here. Add just a little bit more. So again, a very, very light coverage. I really, I really enjoy it. I think it is great for the warmer months. I see, you know, just the slightest bit of coverage here, just like over my freckles, my sunspots, uh, versus what I've got going on on this side. So personally, I am really digging this coverage. I also like the little bit of radiance that it leaves. It really is kind of making my skin look really, really healthy. And as you guys know, I have very, very dry skin. So any bit of radiance I can get, I'm very happy with. Um, but I do wanna see if this is buildable for those of you out there who like a little bit more. So I'm just gonna pump out another pump and I'm gonna go in with the brush again. Sweep that over. Yeah, definitely buildable. I think we're at like a light medium coverage versus light. This medium shade is starting to kind of show its true colors now that I've put like two layers on. And I think you can see like right here down my nose that it is a little bit warm for me. I definitely have much more of like a neutral skin tone or I should say neutral foundations I think work the best for me because I have like varying <laughs> tones on my face. Anyway, it does look a little bit warm down here and I don't know if you guys can see it kind of coming down my neck. You can definitely see like how warm it is, how peachy it is. 
You guys, I have to say, I'm I'm like loving this so far. I love the radiance. I love this like light, light, medium coverage that I'm getting. It looks really, really good. So what I'm gonna do for this video is leave a pinned comment down below, just letting you know how everything wore, uh, you know, how the foundation wore, how all of these products wore. But so far, I'm really, really loving this. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish applying to the rest of my face, and then we can move on to concealer. Actually, before we move on, I'm trying to figure out if there's any fragrance in here. Like I'm smelling makeup, like it doesn't smell bad at all, but I'm not smelling like a fragrance. It doesn't smell very florally, citrusy, sweet, nothing like that. I see some at the very bottom of this ingredient list. Yeah, I just don't, I don't know. I just don't really smell much of anything. All right, there's the foundation all over my face. And like I showed you, it is buildable, Personally, I think I would leave it with that one layer. I just thought it looked really, really nice. It looked fresh. It was kind of like that great no makeup makeup look. Like if you just want a little something, you know, you're maybe running some errands. I thought it was perfect for that. The two layers, I feel like we definitely get to like a light medium coverage. It just looks a little bit more makeup-y, nothing wrong with that. But just personally for me, I just like it really, really light. So I'm glad that I do have that option with this, but I'm Really, really impressed with this. I was not the biggest fan of their foundation balm, as you guys know. Uh, I did a whole dedicated uh, video to that. Um, so I think they've redeemed themselves with this stripped nude skin tint. So happy. All right, let's move on to the RMS Uncover Up Concealer. And I got this in the shade 22. This is the outer box packaging. And I've been purchasing, you know, a little bit more Armas Beauty here and there. So this is not a new product of theirs. It's new to me. I really love the RMS Buriti Bronzer. I really love that um, lip to cheek tint. That one works really, really well for me. So I thought, let me just go ahead and try this concealer. So this is the shade number 22. And the main ingredient in here is coconut oil, and then there's castor seed oil, beeswax, cocoa seed, butter, jojoba seed oil. So RMS is, I know that definitely they're a clean beauty brand. I don't know if they're 100% organic, but I know they're definitely a, a clean beauty brand. This was made in the US, and this has a 12 month shelf life from when it's open. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my fingers and just kind of tap on. This kind of feels like the older sister to the Glossier Stretch Concealer, the one that comes in a very similar uh, like little tub. Um, it has like an emollients like this, but this one I feel like has a teensy bit more coverage and it doesn't feel like quite as emollient as the Stretch Concealer. Like when I put this down, I don't feel like I'm adding any kind of like shine <laughs> to my complexion, where the stretch concealer, I feel like I see, like I see the emollients to it. This definitely feels emollient, but it's not quite as emollient as that one. Yeah, and I feel like it has a little bit more coverage too. Oh, lovely. And this shade 22, I don't think it's uh, like a brightening kind of concealer for me. I think it's just a really nice kind of cover up any sort of darkness that I have underneath any sort of discoloration. I think it's doing a good job for that, but yeah, it's not it's not quite brightening. I think I'd have to go down. I think they have like a 12. I think I'd have to go down to that. But again, this is a really nice kind of like no makeup makeup look. It's just, it's very, very subtle. And then next, I picked up the new Givenchy Prism Libre Powder. Uh, they have like a whole new range of shades in there. So I ended up picking up three Vol Rosé, which I think they recommended for light medium either light or light medium. Anyway, it seemed like the one that would work for my skin tone, but it is very uh, like rosy colored. So those are two of the chambers and then these are the other two. Here is the cap. Oh, this has like a nice matte finish. So no fingerprints there. Open this up, comes with a little puff. All right, let's see if I can show you the shade of this powder a little bit better now. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my La Mer powder brush. And the trick is, how do you get powder out of all of the chambers like at once? So what I do is I just put the cap back on, I take the puff out, and I just do like a quick, <laughs> quick flip. And then you end up with, you know, just a bit in the cap and at the top here. So I'm just gonna dip my brush in. That's how much powder I ended up with. And I'm gonna start with my eyes. There is 
a little bit of fragrance here. Smells like, does it smell like roses? I think it smells like roses. I don't know if the name of it is kind of playing with my mind, but yeah, I think it smells like roses. Very, very light though. I don't smell it once I kind of get it on my skin. All right, there it is all over my skin. It is definitely mattifying. It really took the radiance down from the skin tint and that concealer. But I like the finish of this. It's not like a dry matte. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's like a subtle kind of like satin sheen to it. Really pretty. I do love these Givenchy Prism Libre powders. They leave this like very subtle sheen, which I personally really like. And when it comes to powders that have like a pink tint to them, Sometimes they end up looking very kind of like ashy and chalky on my skin, but uh, when it's done right, like this one, I feel like it does a nice kind of like brightening, which I'm seeing here and I'm so, so happy. That was like my one concern with getting this shade was that it was gonna look a little bit ashy, but I think it looks really nice. I think there's enough kind of like peachiness. Yeah, there's enough kind of like peachiness to some of the powders in here that I think it keeps it from looking a little bit too cool toned. Mm, that finish is so nice. I really like that subtle satin sheen. You can see it on my chin too. Just a really subtle satin sheen. All right. Wow. So far, so good. I do have the Givenchy bronzer as well. This is something I picked up a while ago, but I just haven't gotten the chance to use it for you guys. So it is relatively new. I mean, it's new for this season, so I thought it would be great for this video. So here is the design on the pan. Isn't that so pretty? And this is a baked bronzer. Let me just do a quick swatch for you. It's definitely on the lighter side. <laughs> You're barely gonna see that. Um, so it's definitely gonna be one of those bronzers I feel like I can kind of dust all over and use as an actual bronzer instead of like a bronzer. So I've got my Hourglass number one brush. This is the big powder brush and I'm just gonna dip it in here. With these baked powders, I generally like to use a natural haired brush. It just picks up these powders a little bit better. So I'm just curious to see how this synthetic haired brush, um, how it's gonna do with this powder. Yeah, it's picking up a bit. It's picking up a bit. It's definitely not picking up quite as much as a natural haired brush would, but it kind of goes with this like light bronzer. There we go. It's building up really nicely. The tone of this bronzer, I find a little bit on the warm side, which I really don't mind. Now that it's spring, summer, this probably isn't a tone that I would like to use in the Winter time, I definitely like a more neutral kind of bronzer. My skin's a little bit lighter. It's not quite as sunny outside. I just don't think it looks quite as natural, but in the summertime, I think this looks really nice. And this powder is, you know, definitely more on the matte side. There are no like additional shimmers or anything in this powder, but because it's like a baked gelée, it just kind of has a sheen all into its own so that it doesn't look very dry, really nice finish there. All right, we are like batting a thousand here. Let's move on to the Tower 28 Beach Please. This is a product that I have used already. I have Happy Hour. I decided to give Magic Hour a shot because this is a little bit more uh, neutral. Here is Magic Hour. Isn't that pretty? This is probably the most neutral out of the shades that they have. And here's a swatch of that next to the bronzer. So I'm just gonna put this over my powder. I've really been kind of digging the whole powder first and then cream product down because I feel like it really helps the longevity of the cream. Ooh, this is such a beautiful natural shade with the um, magic, no, this is magic hour, with the happy hour one, I feel like I have to be very careful because it's so bright. For those of you unfamiliar with it, so this one is the happy hour and this is the magic hour that I'm using today. So this one is a much punchier, brighter shade that I have to be really careful with. So if that's not your thing, you know, if you really like a more subtle cheek, definitely this one. I love these Tower 28 Beach Please cream products because they are, they're balmy and they're kind of sticky, but they're not sticky on the cheek. It's like when you go in, you feel like, like there's a little bit of like tack there. And I think that really helps the application. It really helps it kind of like stay put, but it doesn't feel sticky on the cheeks at all. It's like really, really a great, great formula. And Tower 28 is another kind of like clean beauty brand that's out of California. 
another winner from Tower 28. And speaking of Tower 28, I also got their Super Dew uh, Shimmer Free Highlight Balm. And uh, my friend Natalie over at Flower Bomb 31, she got this like as soon as this hit Sephora. I don't know what possessed her, but she ordered this and she texted me right away. She was like, if you haven't tried this, you have to. And I was like, uh, okay, but it's just a balm. So I kind of like held off. I went ahead and tried the Beach Please first. And because I fell in love with that formula, I really wanted to try this, even though it's, it's just a balm. But I'm really curious, oh. I'm really curious about this. So it's a little bit looser. I don't know if you can see that in the pan. It's a little bit looser. It's not quite as kind of like dense and uh, sticky as the Beach Please is. It's like oilier. I think you can probably see that on my finger. So I'm just gonna tap this on. Ooh. It's like a balmy highlight, but there's still, there's like a milkiness to it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. Kind of a useless swatch, but there's a milkiness to it, almost like lip glosses that have like a little something. Most of the straight up bomb highlighters I have, like at the one end of the Pat McGrath sticks, those are just kind of clear and they're just kind of wet and that's what you're seeing, the reflection of. But this actually has a little bit of milkiness to it. Like there's a little bit of like a white pigment to it. That is pretty. I do want to see if it sets down a little bit more. So let's do the other cheek here and we'll go back to the other cheek. Well, I love the way it looks, but if it's gonna stay this emollient, I am probably not gonna like that too much. Okay, it's definitely setting down a little bit. It's not quite as gooey <laughs> as it was when I first put it down. And I'm just gonna keep tapping. I wanna see if I just kind of keep working it in if it's just gonna kind of get absorbed. Let's see. You know, if I keep working it in, I end up with this kind of like satin kind of sheen. And if I leave it there, it's a little bit more high shine, but if I keep working it in, it definitely sets down. It doesn't, you know, stay as like emollient on the cheeks. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Oh yeah, this side feels much better. Actually just kind of feels like I put some moisturizer on. Wow, I have to say this Tower 28 brand is really, really impressing me. I love their Shine On lip jellies as well. Those lip glosses, they're so, so beautiful. Yeah, that's a winner. That is a winner. All right, we still have a lot of winners here. Um, I wanted to use this Charlotte Tilbury quad on my eyes. This is the Mesmerizing Maroon. So this came out a few months ago when she released all of those color quads, the green, the blue, the copper, and this one. And I don't think I've used this on camera for you guys. So since it's still relatively new, I thought, let me go ahead and demo this for you guys because I really enjoy this one. I feel like it's, you know, a little bit different. It's obviously a cooler, more plummy color story, but I just think it's a little bit different now. Like we're still seeing a lot of warm toned um, eyeshadow palettes. So let me go ahead and swipe some of this on for you. All right, I've got my Sonya G Worker Pro brush. I'm gonna go into this like medium tone shimmer shade. And I'm gonna sweep this all over the lid. I love this shade. Isn't it just, it's just so pretty. It's just such a lovely, <laughs> lovely tone. It's like not quite lilac. It's not, you know, pink exactly. I just think it's so lovely. So there's that shade all over my lid. So gorgeous. Uh, I'm gonna use this uh, pencil brush from Refer. I'm gonna go into this light shimmery shade and just add a little bit to the inner corners, tear duct, a little bit of the lower lash line here. Then I'm gonna use my uh, mini booster brush from Sonia G, go into the deeper shimmer shade up here. And then just add this to the outer corners. And just go back to my Worker Pro and blend that in. Then I'm gonna grab my liner brush. This is the Esam T05 brush and I'm gonna go into the one matte shade in this quad and line my eyes. And for me, this plum color works as a liner because it's pretty cool toned. It doesn't have a lot of red in it. If it had a lot of red in it, I feel like it would give you that kind of like sick eye look, but because it's cool enough, I feel like it works nicely as a liner. I'm just kind of blending it 
all in this corner area, blending it all together. All right, that's it for the eyeshadow quad. I just realized I didn't swatch this for you. So, so there is Mesmerizing Maroon. Gorgeous, and I love the formula of these newer quads of Charlotte Tilbury's. Like this matte is so creamy. All right, I'm just gonna curl my lashes and we're gonna use a new mascara. I'm so, I'm so excited. <laughs> so I have the relatively new Gucci mascara, but this is the one and only um, mascara that Gucci has. And this has such a like nice weight to it. I think it's on the cap actually. And let me show you the wand because it's like kind of like a football eye shape and it's plastic bristles. And I've heard some decent things about this mascara. So I'm just really curious to see for myself how this one works out. And I will definitely um, include an update on this mascara in that pinned comment down below. I feel like this formula is a little bit on the wetter side. It's not totally like loose and liquidy but it's a little bit on the wetter side. It could be because it's brand new. I did just open it a couple days ago. I do feel like it's giving me some volume and some length, which is nice. I prefer length to volume, but I'll take both. All right, and while that is drying, I'm just gonna throw on some of my Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. Oh no, I feel like my Fiber Brow Gel is drying out a little bit. <laughs> gonna have to get a new tube. All right, and last but not least, uh, I picked up some new Guerlain products. So they came out with new lipstick cases and some new lipsticks. So I decided to get one of their sheer shines. You guys know how much I love like the sheer tinted lip balm kind of lipstick. And I got number seven, Sheer Nude. So the lipstick is just the base and then you have to get um, a case for it. Oh, oops, uh oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I just turned it a little bit with this cap on it and I got, I like turned the lipstick into the case. Oh, but this is what it looks like. And then let me swatch this. Oh, it has like a little bit of shimmer in there. Ooh, pretty. Oh, I like that. So that's the lipstick I got, but you guys, I have to show you the lipstick case. So it comes in this little velvet pouch. Look, it's like a bunch of crystals. <laughs> I love it. And then I don't know if you guys are familiar with these Guerlain cases, but it flips up into a mirror. So the lipstick goes in and this little guy, I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of hangs over. This is what keeps the mirror closed. And then when you kind of take your lipstick out, the mirror pops open, but isn't that pretty? So they have a bunch of different colors. I was also tempted, they have like a, like a hot pink. <laughs> But I was like, you know what? This is a little bit more me. So I love this. Let's go ahead and put the lipstick on, Michelle. Enough about the case. Very true to its name. It's a sheer nude for sure. There's a little bit of like a, like a powdery, perfumey kind of scent, which I'm not a fan of. And I taste like a little bit of a sweetness there, but it's okay. It's like, it's already fading. But I think this is similar to the other Guerlain lipsticks that I have. So if you have experience with Guerlain lipsticks, I believe it's the same kind of like fragrance and slight, slight taste. I love this shade. That is so pretty. Feels great. Really, really light on the lips. Can't really like feel it on my lips. It's not like overly waxy or anything. Mm, really nice and <laughs> so beautiful. All right, well, that is it for my try on Sephora haul. A big, big thank you to Sephora for sponsoring me for this video. And let me know if you guys enjoyed this video down below in the comment section. If you have any questions about any of these products, let me know. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.